everybody. My name is Annie Gullingsrud, and I am the director of the um, fashion and textile sector at the Cradle to Cradle Products Innovation Institute in the Bay Area. We just moved to Oakland, um, which is also as wonderful as San Francisco. And um, yay! And we're so happy to be here in Denmark. It's such a, Copenhagen's such a wonderful city. Um, it's, I was here exactly a year ago, and I'm going to tell you that story in a moment. Um, there are a couple things that I heard um, for our, for, from our first speakers. Lewis mentioned, uh, we're all the instruments of, of the work. And I, I really can't stress the importance of partnership and relationship in um, not only the circular economy, but circular apparel. Uh, that butterfly, I don't know if any of this made you guys say, whoa, this is, this is oh, how do I do this, you know? And uh, it really is about uh, focus and identifying uh, who's good at what. What are, you, what are you good at and who do you need, what do you need someone else for in identifying a really strategic partnership to help you carry it out? Because something I've learned, we're transitioning from uh, sustainability into circular apparel. So we're transitioning from sustainability into the circular economy, which is broad, roomy, vast, and has, has a space for all of us. There's a lot to do, and I've had individual conversations with each of you, and I hear a unique uh, position for most of you. I hear a uniqueness, and we need all of us in this room to carry it out. I'm going to be talking about circular materials, but we can't really talk about circular materials without talking about everything that they touch along the way. I, I heard partnership, and I hear that there are a lot of unknowns. There are a lot of unknowns. Um, depending on where you sit in the fashion supply chain, it can be confusing. Uh, you might sit over here and you might not know where you source this from. It's a little scary uh, for me. And what if we could go way back to the beginning and, and start right over here and, and to start with getting those uh, materials good and then they're streaming up. I think of a, a root or a, uh, into a tree. They're just streaming out into the economy. So we're going to go all the way back to the beginning. We're going to start here, and we're going to get those materials right. I'm going to start by telling you a bit of a story. Um, so a year ago, I was here in Copenhagen for the Copenhagen Fashion Summit, and um, I was wearing this exact skirt. So this skirt came out uh, a few weeks before. It's the H&M Conscious Collection. It's made out of post-consumer uh, polyester um, ingredients, not waste, but uh, materials. And I was wearing this last year, and I was um, 12 weeks pregnant, okay? So um, I, uh, I take some time off. You know, I, I, uh, I have the baby in November. I take some time off. Her name is Violet, and she loves H&M Conscious Collection. It's perfect for her. And, uh, you know, one day I'm holding Violet in a, in, a, in a carrier, and she's against my body. And I'm wearing this great sweater. You know, it's, it's gray, and it was, it was made in a, in a facility, I think in Vietnam, and it, it was uh, ethically produced with fair labor. And I, I love this sweater. It's so cozy. I'm holding my sweet little, um, I think she was like a month at the time. And... Um, we're walking around, walking around, and I, I take her out, I put her down, I have to put the carrier down, and I'm horrified when I look at her face, this cute little face, these big eyes. Violet has dye all over her face. And um, there's, there's certain things I can't think very much about, um, which is why I love my job, because I'm focused on the solution here. Um, but I, I, I saw these fibers on her face, and I, um, I had no idea where the dyes had come from. I had absolutely no idea. And uh, they were on. The thing about a baby is, is uh, you know, it, it's a little different than an adult. Is they're, they're just, if something's not, if there's chemistry that's not optimized in our materials, that, that baby is going to take that into her system a lot quicker than us adults do. So you can imagine, I'm, I'm sitting there looking at the dyes on her face, just not, just having, absolutely, I have, no, and I don't even know if the brand knows how important this is. I have no idea. 
And, and it really, it goes down to the foundation, the root of the materials. What are we talking about when I say materials? We're talking about the components that go into making the garments that we wear. So when I look at this outfit, I don't see an outfit. I see a range of a portfolio of materials from recycled yarn to a zipper to the metal on the zipper to the polyester that makes up the zipper. I see a sewing thread. Um, there's chemicals that make up all those ingredients. There's a lining. And I just see uh, opportunity. This is what we do in Fashion Positive. So what, we, what we've done is we're getting together a group of apparel companies such as H&M, Stella McCartney, Eileen Fisher, who are all in the room, and others who are identifying shared material needs. So instead of saying to you individually, hey, you need to do this all on your own, um, we're saying, hey, we know a lot of you are using the same base, pre-competitive foundational materials. I know that because I've been working in the industry long enough to know that you're telling me over here you use this from a certain supplier, you're telling me over here, this person's telling me over here, I'm that central vestibule hearing all of it. So I know they're shared materials. And again, we're going down to the, the foundational level. We're not talking about those proprietary materials. We're talking about the root. We're getting these companies together, they're identifying what their shared materials are, and then we're using the Cradle to Cradle certified standard to improve those materials to make them circular. And I'm gonna tell you what circularity, what a circular material actually is. So we're creating these building block materials. Those materials include uh, uh, dyes, trims, yarn. So again, there's a little bit of a, a shift here. We're talking about Fibers, yarns. We're not necessarily talking about fabric yet because you're taking that fabric and you're, you're making it your own, okay? Pre-competitive materials. We're putting it all into this public library that you can access. So these leadership partners are getting together and they're creating these needs together. They're getting certified, they're becoming circular and then they're being put into the Fashion Positive Materials uh, collection. This is an example of one of those materials. It's a cashmere yarn that went through the process of Cradle to Cradle certification. Um, Ignacy Kubina will be, I think, mentioning that in his uh, speech right after me. You can, you can access this. It's, um, you can just go on our website, fashionpositive.org, and access all this information. If you're a designer, you can see all the technical specifications behind that fiber. You can also get in touch with the supplier as well. Okay, the big question on the table. What's a circular material? I'm going to simplify this as much as I possibly can because uh, I don't want you leaving today wondering what to do. I want you to have some sort of focus and direction and know your role, okay? So uh, simply, and, and you've heard this already, it's a safe material perpetually cycled. Cradle to cradle adds on a component to that, which is respect for humans in the environment, okay? It's made in respect to humans in the environment. There's three areas you wanna be thinking about that I'm going to touch on as I walk you through how we do that, the pathway, which is using our standard. Sourcing for circularity, that's really a, a materials discussion. So if you're a designer in the room or somebody who's selecting your materials, you wanna source the right materials. Designing for circularity, so we heard a lot about that today. Um, design for disassembly is a, is a great example of that. Um, scaling that is a different conversation. Um, and then circular systems. So the interesting thing about talking about a circular material, it, it reminds me of the difference between sustainability and a circular material is you can't just talk about one thing. You really can't. So I'm gonna simplify the conversation, but if, if again, I'm gonna talk a bit to the designer today because I believe they have the, the power to choose the right good, material, but they also need to know that down the chain there's going to be things that we need to be thinking about, so that's where the circular systems come into play. ICO is a great example of a partner that we need to ensure that what gets fed into the beginning 
continues to get circulated. And I rely on you to do that. You're a really important partner in that. So this is how we do it. We've had this pathway for over a decade now, decades actually. Um, this pathway has been around for a long time. It was the foundation for the Ellen MacArthur Foundation's pathway in the butterfly. Um, we have five areas, uh, material health, and this piece, we're, we're really talking about chemistry, material reutilization. Okay, so are we just talking about recycling? Absolutely not. We're talking about a, a, a much larger dynamic conversation around material reutilization I'll touch on in a minute. Renewable energy, water stewardship, social fairness. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on those right now. Um, the focus on renewable energy, of course, is using renewable energy, providing renewable energy, not just taking it, giving it. So it's all about the positive. Water stewardship, very, very closely connected to chemistry. So be thinking about these things when we're making these things, when we're dyeing these garments. There's typically some sort of a water effluent. Where does it go and what's in it and who is it affecting? We have a pathway for that. And social fairness, supporting and celebrating human and natural systems. So I'm actually going to focus a bit on uh, material reutilization and material health. So these pieces here, and I... I, I these are very important. These are happening at the facility level. So we also rely on other standards and, and certifications and other initiatives to ensure um, that these are carried out properly. That's how it's written in our standard. Um, these happen at the facility level, so the responsibility is there, there is choosing a, a good facility that you have transparency into. Let's go into material reutilization. Okay, I was just having an interesting conversation about this, so you've heard about this already, right? We all know we're looking at biological and technical nutrients. Can someone give me, give me an example of a biological nutrient in fashion? Material. Cotton, what else? Wool, tensile, right. And give me an example of a technical nutrient. Synthetic, polyester, nylon acrylic, right? Um, do, so for the designers out there, do you typically only design garments that are biological or technical? Is there a yes in this room anywhere? Okay. I didn't hear a yes, right? Never tell a designer only to design within those two nutrients. You will get laughed at. So what do we do? You know, what do we do here? So we're starting to blend, right? And we're also starting to, I think, uh, Ignasi, you mentioned this. We're starting to cross, we're starting to cross lines here. Your biological nutrients are prepped to go back into the biological ecosystem. Whereas you want your technical nutrients, they're not going back into the the ground. They have no ability to biodegrade, but you want to keep them circulating. You want to keep them circulating as long as possible. You also want to upcycle, which means you want to be creating a next generation of those constituents of, of, of that fiber into a virgin quality material. Got it? It's a little different than the industry, the way that we talk about it. So we want to be upcycling. So we get those. Now what happens when there's a blend, right? And then what happens when we're talking about, there's a lot of cotton recycling going on when we're talking about maybe a mechanical recycling of cotton, right? So it's, I think it really is starting to cross from biological into technical. The technical is the circulating, right? So maybe it circulates as long as you possibly can and then it goes back into biological because it's prepped for that. Now. I know we're talking about materials, but answer this question. What happens when you have a biodegradable, biological material with something on it that's not biodegradable, right? It's a consideration. A dye, Nasi, maybe you'll touch on this a little bit. A dye is a perfect example of that. So, 
again, when you're talking about a circular material, it's touching all of these things. And are you asking yourself that question? What's going on it? And are we sure that when it follows that pathway into whatever cycle it's going, that it's prepped and ready to be able to do that? Okay, so there are some, okay, let's just say mechanical recycling, we know what that is, talked about that earlier. It's a great interlude into the circular economy. But there's a couple of steps before that and after that. So some limitations that we currently have around recycling is, um, I would say, a, a, a large, uh, limitation or opportunity that we're looking at trying to solve is contamination. So we know that mechanical recycling chops, right? You're either chopping, there's melt processing where you're melting, you can melt a, a synthetic material such as a PET. You might be chopping a mechanical recycling, you're chopping and grinding. I worked at a facility in India where there are 10, 10 different machines that takes that cotton fabric all the way down into this fiber that's sort of floating into the air, right? Post-consumer, or even sometimes post-industrial, it's typically not undyed fiber, right? There are certain uh, uh, components on that fiber that you want to be considering. Dyes, prints. So the question is, is well, A, do we know do we know if those uh, components, those, uh, you know, the dyes and the prints that are going on to the fabric, do we know if those are, have they been optimized to be against the skin? Is that okay? Is it okay that, have they been optimized to go back into the ground? Do we know the answer to that? And do we want to be continuously circulating something that we're really not sure of? Yeah, I, I'm not really sure. And, in, in, in a, well, I know. Right now, it's okay. You know, it's sort of like, we, we, this, this is a huge effort right now to get into recycling, but we, we really want to go beyond that towards upcycling. So I want you to imagine that we all have the opportunity to start from the beginning. So what would we do if we were starting from the beginning? I'd, I'd, I'd input the entire industry in the planet with optimized, better materials. I'm going to tell you how Cradle to Cradle does that. But of course, wouldn't we want to push in all these really good materials that have been optimized to be against your skin? They've been optimized to go back to the ground if that's what they want to do. They've been optimized from a human health perspective, from an environmental perspective. Wouldn't we want to push all those materials in? Because the, the, the assumption is that we're going to be uh, you know, reusing. There's so many steps along the pathway. We'll reuse, we'll resell, we'll rewear. We'll go here and there, and then it will end up in this place um, where it has an opportunity that um, I can't remember the percentage. What percent, Lydia? 40% um, couldn't be resold, those garments. 55%, ah! So that's a lot of materials we have to play with. So don't we want to ensure that that 55% has been optimized to be circulating in the system? Absolutely. So we have a couple challenges and I, they, they, they might be sort of bubbling up in your brain. You know, I'm here because I want to be a conduit for the solution to these challenges. So just raising them, don't, don't, you know, I don't want you to be overwhelmed by them. We're all here together to start solving these problems. And the only way that we can do that is to know where they're at, you know. A lot of fibers are actually, uh, they have the ability to be recycled that 55%, um, there's not a lot of technology out there to be able to do that. So when we're talking about mechanical recycling, it, there's the technology there. When we're starting to talk about chemical recycling, Tamara talked a little bit about this. There's a lot of up and coming innovations that are going on to help us 
go to that place of, well, well how do we do that? Okay, is there a technology that can help remove contaminants so we, we can be cycling these things? Is there a technology that, okay, got it, I know I'm gonna design in a blend. I, I need this 99% you know, cotton, 1% spandex, because it makes my pair of jeans perfect. Is there a technology that can separate? There is, and a lot of this stuff is being developed. So where we're at right now, we know where we need to go. We heard this already, um, sorting, sorting capabilities. While they exist, there's still a lot of innovation needed in that area. So there are still currently some limitations, but um, we, can, we, can, we can design, we, we can help innovate on them. Um, oh, this is an interesting one. Value of textile fibers gets lost. <sighs> Sometimes, um, you know, uh, uh, the, the cost of a virgin fiber is uh, less than uh, a recycled fiber. And then, I mean, this is not necessarily a challenge, but um, I think it's a nice step along the way. So we, we, we really want to ensure, and this is where I believe a partner like ICO can really come in, we want to ensure that we have the right partnerships set up, that they're a good, they can decide, they'll be able to decide and say, this needs to be resold. Renewal Workshop is another important partner. This needs to be resold. It's in great condition. I can fix it just a little bit, get it back out there. And, and, and a partner who can make the decision saying, this is, this is not good, we don't want to resell this, but we're going to send it to this, this, and this person, the Renewacell, the, you know, the Ionica, the Ambercycle, the Evernew, we're going to send it over to them, and they're going to take care of it, and they're going to give you, all you designers back this amazing virgin quality polyester fiber. We need to rely on you to be able to do that. So, and I, and I think... We want, to, we want to optimize these cycles, and we want to also think about how do we blend them a little bit. And we, and we want to know that if we're using blends, there are certain decisions that we need to, to make later on the line. And I think, again, that comes, I, I think at this point, too, where, where do you have responsibility? And that, I think, is the, just the knowledge and awareness. You know, knowing that, yes, got it. When we create a blend, we, we should be creating blends, but what are the partnerships down the line that we can rely on to help us process these blends and to really focus on those partnerships? All right, so let's go over. I have about 10 minutes um, to talk about a very big category. I'm just gonna breeze through this because I am not a chemist. I am a trained fashion designer, so I can talk about this on a very high level. Yes, we're sitting, Amanda over there is a textile chemist. <laughs> Okay, this is the fashion designer version. Clean in, clean out, right? Okay, so you want, you want clean materials flowing in, optimized chemistry, and then we want that to continue cycling, right? It's a basic premise. Everyone can get it. I hope everyone agrees with it. Why would you disagree? We want to flow in really good materials from the beginning, and we want to keep them circulating. Okay, so my non-chemist version of this is inventory, screen, assess, and optimize. So look at what, what's, so if we're talking about polyester, we're gonna look at everything that goes into making that polyester. So all the chemicals, right? What's not in it? And this is where, um, I think we have a next slide on this, where we think about a ban list, you know, we want to make sure, a ban list is great. Say, okay, this, this thing, this chemical cannot be and is not in the specific material. That's a great place to start. But what it's not going to tell you is everything else that's there that we have no idea what it could be. So we want to, we want to do assessment. What is in there? We want to redesign materials to pose no risk, and we want to use, I mean, essentially, don't you want to be pulling from a, a portfolio of positive materials? I mean, isn't that the goal? That you don't have to sit there questioning, what do I do, what do I do? Don't you just want to go into a library and say, oh, I'll just use these, I can trust them, you know? Wouldn't you rather be starting from a positive list? 
just makes it easier, and then as a designer, you can start getting creative. So this is what I was talking about. Avoiding bad does not equal good. Um, we have so many great examples of this. Is Band list, again, it's a great place to start, but sometimes um, it, it's just, it's just going to tell us this is definitely not in there, but what about everything that is? And it can lead to regrettable substitutions. We want to lean towards the optimization and the, the positive optimization. We want to start with a positive. I, I think what this also allows us to do in thinking about a conversation that's coming up a little bit later, um, we want to identify the areas, the, the gaps. So if we, okay, and I'll give you an example of this. We know that we have biological and technical. Okay, got it. We know that it's going to be hard to just design in those two uh, metabolisms. Okay, so we know we use bloods. Okay, we know that that's difficult down the line. We heard that. We heard that from ICO. Okay, we know that reuse, okay, got it, but then we get to this place and we really, really want to upcycle it because when we do that, it can keep circulating and circulating, right? I mean, it just pulls the strain off of, it pulls the strain off of the planet. It's just, I mean, come on, it's just a little bit more intelligent to keep reusing those materials in a creative way. So, um, Bef before we go into this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repeat a couple things and then I'll probably repeat them again. I hope, I hope that what you hear about a circular material, and I hope that what you take away is that we need to, to optimize them from a material health, from a chemistry perspective, from the start. We want to be infiltrating the system with, with positive, better materials. And we want to think about where, where do they have the capacity to go once those materials are made into something, where are they going, and who can, who can we get to help us? Okay, so those are the things I want you to be thinking about and talking about. So, let's do this. I'm curious, how many materials are you wearing? I'm going to define material again. So, it's like a, a, the word material is a, a house for a lot of things. So, um, dyes, yarn, or yarn or fabric, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, I have beads, there's sewing thread, there's a zipper, there's a lining. What else is there? Interfacing, yeah. In my shirt, I know there's a blend, there's a, 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 a thread, a yarn. Um, there's dyes, there's labels. Yeah, I get everything? There's a lot more. So look down. Um, let's, let's look at your whole outfit. So if you have three pieces, even better. Look at everything that you're wearing. Let's leave shoes out of it, because that's going to add an extra 10 to 15 components plus. So just take a couple minutes, look down. I just want you to sort of add up all of the materials that you are wearing. Leave out the shoes and the socks. Okay, I'm going to pause. So just look down and um, in your head, add up how many materials you're wearing. Who's wearing one? Raise your hand. Okay. I guess that's not surprising. Who's wearing two to five materials? Anybody? Okay. A couple of you. Yeah. Six. Two to five materials. Okay, six to 10. Who's wearing six to 10? Ooh, in between, okay. Keep your hands up, I didn't see everybody, yeah? Okay, I see an increase in hands. 11 to 15. Oh, this table got it going on, yeah. A lot of work to do over here, good. 16 to 20, anyone? Interesting. Five, anyone above 20? You win. Is it just one? Okay guys, we have a lot of work to do. 